Welcome back guys, um, I'm going to make this part 2 because the last video was going pretty long before I ran into a snag um, so what's happened is um, I was having an issue with the tape, the double sided tape that I was using uh, I shot out, got some uh, new tape and then I went through did this again and I put them all on to make sure that it was all going to work and it has um, so this is now uh, the 1080 Ti uh, with all the heat sinks applied. Uh, don't get too hung up on how I have arranged all these. I actually ran out of uh, particular ones I wanted for different areas. Um, I did want um, some blue strips going straight up here, but I ran out of the blue ones, so I put them in the essential areas where I wanted them. Um, it doesn't matter um, as long as you get the coverage. So as long as the heat sinks are actually applied to these areas, um, so you end up with the VRAM, um, those 11 chips around are covered, um, and then we've got these other areas here um, all sorted. Now, I wouldn't get too technical into um, the things that you have to cover. Like There's videos out there where people explain all the different bits and pieces and whatnot, but if you just basically look at, um, if I line these up, and I just zoom this out, that's your card. You look at the thermal pads where the thermal pads are placed. Um, now I've done this before, so you know I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. Um, but you've got the thermal pads which are covering all of the VRAM around here, um, so you know those areas need to get the heat sinks on. Then they've got the thermal pads here. Um, covering all of this and that's all of this area here um, so you know that you want to get that coverage as well um, and they've got some thermal pads in here so um, I just chuck them in those areas I don't go into technical specs of what things are and all that kind of stuff I get all that information from other people that know what they're talking about um, and that gives me the um, information needed for me to do my own jobs um, my videos are always aimed at people that are just like me that don't know jack shit but they're learning and doing things themselves um, and so that's that's um, what this is all about so now we've got the heat sinks applied um, I'll get that out of there now we've got all these applied so that's how the board's looking um, so it's looking pretty good and they're holding up so they're actually secured in there that's pretty good from here we can go into the hardest part of this job which is installing this thing because this is a bitch so from here what we need to do next is I'll just take these off I put them so the bracket wouldn't fall off while I was showing you What we need to do now is apply a thermal paste. So I'll get my Arctic Silver 5, which I've got here. And now with the thermal paste, um, you would have seen people going, oh, you need a grain of rice um, here. You need a, there's all these different techniques that people do. Um, God, it's a bit difficult to do it from this angle. Um, there's all these different techniques out there that people do however all that stuff got blown out of the water when it was discovered um, that it didn't matter how much thermal paste you put on here so rather than put a little amount in and risk not covering a certain area I put plenty on and that way I know everything is covered so as you can see in the video, that's that's my technique. I do an X, and then I just cover in the uh, the sections that are uncovered with a little bit, and you know that that's all going to spread out and cover, do full coverage. So put the card aside for a second because installing this is the hardest part, and what you need to do is you need to figure out how you want to orientate 
like this in your case and where you want the cables going now I know for me for my setup um, I want my cables coming out this area here the hose pipe sorry um, so I've got to orientate the cooler so the hoses run along here and out and that's what um, suits with my rig and um, with how I have it set up so to do that I will poke the cooler through here and this is a bugger this and I'm trying to do it for the camera too which is not looking easy here and I'm going to get that card out of the way and one second let's just zoom that out again okay so through it goes lock it in place okay This is the fun that you have with this design. It's always fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. Get the card. Let's just line up as best I can. Because I've bent one of my screws, this is going to be extra tricky. Oh god, yeah, because that's going to happen. And that's the bent screw down the bottom, I can see it. There we go. There we go, it's in. We are down. Okay. Let's turn that around again. So from here, it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, getting the right tension on the four screws that you've got around your cooler. Oh, and mine's come out of place too. Oh, it's fucked it. Okay. Alright, I should really ignore the camera when I'm trying to do this. Okay, take two and we got it. There we go, right. Now we're in. So now, because the back plate is on, um, it means that we've got less room uh, when the screws poke through the holes. We've got less room to work with, so it does make it trickier. But I would rather leave the back plate on for that uh, final look um, than to do this without. So just with a little bit of pressure, you want to get these screws just on they just need to hold it because there's already enough tension there it's gonna be tricky I'll just move it up there so you can kind of see what I'm doing One thing you'll find too, um, with there being little room to work with the back plate being on, fuck. This, this is why this is the most frustrating part. Um, because there's um, less room to work with, getting the right amount of tension 
can be tricky. So you might put this in your card after you've put it together and find that the calling is all over the place. And that could be um, simply because you've got the tension wrong on, on your screws. So it's a matter of pulling it out and playing around with them. I just pulled it out. Um, and playing around with them until you get it right. Which is what I'm going to have to do. Um, that's, that's the process I'll go through after this. Um, but I won't put you guys through that um, pain. if I've got it around the right way, eh? That was a pretty amateur mistake there. And then this tricky one right in the corner, uh, which is always a bitch because this is where the pipes are. Forget that. Just move those to the side. This is the trickiest one to get in. I could, um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, um, I could get some custom screws. Just ones that are longer. Um, and that was the bent one coming out. Maybe it's the bent one that's the problem. It's creating a bit of a drama. Um, okay, so you know what I'm doing. I'm just going to pause this while I just muck around with these screws because I've got that bent screw in there which is creating a bit of an issue. Um, so I'll just pause it for now. Right, to say that was frustrating would be an understatement, but it's in, um, it's on, it looks like such, with the back plate, and my cooler, so from here, um, that's what it's going to look like too when you've got it in the machine, so there's all sorts of... Um, different heat sinks and different shit that you can get for these and do it. Now that bracket, you'll see that it's flush, it's quite, it's even. Um, that's why I put those washers just in here. Um, because if it wasn't, then what you'd be seeing is it would be dipping on one side because one of the screws that holds, um, one of the nuts I should say, that holds the screws in, in place, that would have fallen into this little gap in the back of the back plate. Um, so that looks nice and even so it's together I don't know if I've got the tensions right I'm going to have to play around with it to um, work that one out I do find that with this particular card and the back plate that they've got I don't know if it's to do with the, the new copper um, piece that they've thrown in there but it, there's definitely less room to work with on the screws for the Kraken um, so that did make it a little bit harder you could take the back plate off you don't have to have the back plate on but I definitely prefer it for aesthetics if you took the back plate off you'd have no dramas whatsoever um, but that's it so we've got the heat sinks on we've got the Kraken hooked up um, I've got my 
radiator ready to go. I've got the fan in the case that's waiting to go back to its uh, original home with this radiator. So I will pull out the 980 Ti, chuck this in, and hopefully it won't blow up. And if it doesn't, you'll hear from me again. Um, sweet, so I don't think there's anything else to point out from there. Um, the whole process to get to this point is pretty simple. The hardest part definitely is to deal with uh, the actual Kraken and doing that install. That tends to be the hardest part. Um, everything else is pretty straightforward. So, right, time to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Temperature wise, um, I'm expecting. Uh, I was playing some games last night everything in 4k maxing it out and the original card with its cooler does really well it actually kept it around 72 degrees um, for what I was doing and I thought that was impressive given that the 980 Ti's uh, definitely weren't as good as that um, and the 980 Ti's wound up something wicked so I had to rip those coolers off these ones actually stayed pretty quiet and um, the temperatures weren't too bad so I'm expecting to get down to the 50s with the setup um, instead of the you know low 70s, but we'll see. Okay, stay tuned, and I'll give you an update when I've got this thing running in the machine. Cheers.